Hey guys, Prophetess Caldwell here. Listen, I'm not going to be before you long because I'm at work and it's raining. Um, but I want to elaborate on last night's um, prophetic coaching that I did on struggling with prayer. Um, I was sitting here, sitting in the chair a few minutes ago, and the Lord began to speak to me and deal with me uh, regarding prayer um, from last night. And he said to me, people are so content and comfortable with not hearing him. And I'm thinking to myself, um, you know, how can that be, Lord, if we are yours, if we are called by your name, if we are your people, how is it then that we are content with not talking to you and not hearing you? And he began to give me this whole scenario. This scenario began to play out in my mind like a rewind, like it, like it was a memory of mine. And what he showed me was this. There are many of you who you say things like, oh, I'm just waiting on God. I'm just waiting on him to move. Oh, I prayed about this thing and I'm just waiting on him. And then when someone asks you, well, how long have you been waiting? Oh, you know, 10 months. Oh, it's been seven years now. And my thing is, I don't even know the right word to use. But if it were me, having the bond that I have with my God, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that if I pray this afternoon, if I pray this evening about a particular situation, seeking instructions from him, and then I not hear a response for 10 months, like there's a problem. That is a problem. And it's not that the problem is within God, the problem is within me because I've sought him and then I did not seek him for the answer. I did not listen for the response. And I've, I've sat and, I've, and I've, I've been content for 10 months, three years, seven years with not going back to the Lord to say, hey, did I miss something? And so people are so content to say, Oh, I've been praying about it and I'm just waiting on God. No, honey, you, you missed God. Actually, while in your waiting, you missed him someplace. If, if, if you're waiting 10 months for a response, that's not the God we serve. Matter of fact, in the book of Job, he says that when we lie down, when man is sleep and deep sleep is up, um, upon them, that he instills instructions. So when you lay down, God is constantly giving you instructions you miss your instructions someplace. And so the Lord wants me to tell people, stop and repent of this I'm waiting on God nonsense. You're not waiting on him. You're moving without him and you're moving without his instruction. And you need to go back to the, to the drawing board, ask God to reveal that thing to you that you missed. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. Another thing, the reason why I'm walking the grounds right now is because it needs to be saturated with some anointing. There's a, uh, another reason why some of you are struggling with prayer. And I'm getting ready to show you what I'm walking around this property like this for. You can't pray because your atmosphere is sucking and draining the Holy Ghost out of you. Your atmosphere is sucking and draining the glory out of you. What little fire you had, what little oil you had burning in that little lamp of yours is completely blown out because of your atmosphere. And so I want to show you, the Lord showed me this last night, but I'm going to elaborate a little further. You, if, if this is you and you have these mystical, mythical creatures all in your yard, in your house, you know what I'm saying? Um, then you need to move it. Look at that. Demonic. There's a monitoring demon attached to this statue 
where it wants to listen to the conversations that you have. And so when you talk and put things in the atmosphere, guess what? There are monitoring agents picking it up and taking it to the second heaven, not the third heaven where our Lord reigns, but the second heaven where the God of this earth reigns. And then he hinders your prayer. This is why Daniel's the angel had to tell Daniel that his prayer was heard, but it was hindered and held up in the second heaven. You're putting your business in the atmosphere for these monitoring demons to pick it up. And look at this. You have these mystical, these, these, these dwarfs, mythicism, all in your yard. You got these fountains with gnomes all in your yard. Why you have this? You know what I'm saying? Why you got this? For what? And look at this. Look, this thing is monitoring you. That's a demon attached to this. This is why the people that live here are dealing with so many issues. I'm not going to go into what they are, but they're issues that I have not seen on any of my other clients who are professing Christian. This is why, look at this. Look at that monitoring just watching just watching demonizing your household why look at that toes frogs you know you know that stuff reckon you know that stuff symbolize you know what this stuff says flies on the wall and all that all that nonsense Just mythicism, mysticism, toads, frogs, monitoring agents, strongholds, uh, smurfs, and all that stuff in your yard, in your house, frogs, in your sunroom. Why? What for? It's doing you more harm than it is any good. You got more demons coming and going than you got any Holy Ghost. And some of you need to hear this because you, right now you're looking at some statues in your living room. You're looking at some mythos, mythical stuff in your yard. And you're like, oh my gosh, no wonder when I try to read. No wonder when I try to pray. No wonder I'm always feeling like there are shadows. No wonder I'm always seeing things. No wonder things are always bumping in the night. No wonder I'm always... Um, uh, not at ease and I'm uneasy. No wonder I'm always tormented in my mind. No wonder I'm so confused. No wonder I can't concentrate. No wonder I can't finish anything. No wonder I procrastinate. Look at this. The Lord rebuke you, devil. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord says, everywhere that my feet shall tread upon is my land. So while this may not be my property and while this may not be my house, every fairy, every gnome, every monitoring agent, everything under the sun, wherever my car, my tires are an extension of my feet. Because wherever my tires go, there shall my feet be also. So wherever I drive, wherever I ride, wherever I walk, this is my land. And so while I'm on the clock for these next seven hours, no harm shall come nigh unto my dwelling. In fact, when I'm on the clock, my clients have peace because the anointing is here. And every demon that was in the house has to run and hide and take coverage and flee until I leave the premises. Y'all need to walk in your authority and stop this foolishness. I'm waiting on God. No, you missed him.